Welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. I got a message on Twitter the other day from Davis Maxwell. Hey Reaper blog, would love to see a video on how you set up multi-track drum recording if you haven't already made one. And I haven't already made one, so uh, that's what we'll do today. I can't go as far as actually getting the drums recorded in this video, but I will show you the things that I think about as I prepare for a drum recording session and how to create a template for doing the tracking session. All right, so I usually start off the process of figuring out the session by writing down what inputs I need, what microphones I need. So I'm just gonna write this down. And if I do it in a thing like Evernote, then I have it on my phone. I could share this uh, if the you know if I'm going somewhere and they have an assistant and they you know, they can set up the microphones for me in advance. But yeah, I'm kind of just uh, assuming that I'm using my own gear, but I'm not going to be in my own studio for this. Maybe you don't need to do this. Maybe you already know all this, but this is just something I do to prepare for the session. I'll just make a numbered list and input one will be the kick drum. And I'll use a sure beta 52 a snare drum on the top. Use a SM57. I usually do overhead and if I have to use my own microphones, it'd be a AT3035. I like large diaphragm condensers. I just find it's like a, you know, a smoother sound. Pencil condensers are nice as well, but I find it's like too much transient detail that isn't even necessary at all. From there, it's like toms, room mics, and hi-hat mics near top and bottom if, if you have enough tracks available. Tom 1 will be like the main rack tom. There'll be another SM57. Tom 2 or 3 or whatever it is, the floor tom, will be uh, a CAD. M179, that's one I own, so. Input seven will be snare bottom. Something, whatever's left over, something weird, probably like a pencil condenser of some kind. The last mic will be for a room, and it'll be an Apex 460. And that's just a, tube, a large diaphragm tube mic, uh, variable patterns and all that kind of stuff. So that's the instrument and the microphone that will be on the instrument. I need those mics. I also need eight XLR cables. I'll need my interface. I'll need a firewire cable, hard drive, headphone extension, uh, headphones times two. Uh, I think that's kind of the the minimum amount of stuff. If I'm recording drums in one room, uh, that's probably what I would have with me. Maybe I'll bring earplugs as well. <laughs> you know, just, just so you don't forget. All right, so into Reaper. I'm just going to delete this track, insert multiple tracks, and I need eight tracks. So eight tracks come in. First one was kick. Next was snare. Next was, uh, we'll do snare bottom, tom one, tom two, overhead left, overhead right, and room. Now I didn't do that in the same order because I like to have my tracks in uh, a different order. And so I need to m match the inputs for these tracks to match the, uh, the microphones. So these inputs didn't go sequentially. They're all set to input one right now. The second track needs input two. Actually, the third track is the snare bottom, and that was on the input seven. And we can set up these inputs a little bit easier if we go to the view menu, routing matrix. Now this window is pretty intimidating if you're new to it. So uh, on the left side, this is our sources. And on the right side, going uh, left and right, that's our destinations. We have inputs right here. Here's my first mic preamp, second, third, fourth. So Tom one was input five. Tom two is input six. The overheads were three and four. And the room mic will be on input eight. 
So this is just a quicker way of assigning the inputs. I mean, if they're just going sequentially, you can just draw it in like that. That makes it really quick. But in this case, snare bottom was on input seven, tom was on five, six, and overhead was on three and four. Close the routing matrix and open up the mixer. So I know that my tom one is going to be centered, but my tom two is going to be panned hard. My left and rights are going to be panned hard. Okay, I can set these all up for input monitoring by just clicking and dragging across. I can arm them for recording if I wanted to as well, but I'm not going to here because I'm already using one of the microphones. Don't want to mess up my recording. So we've got our tracks set up and maybe we want to color them. So right click, track color. You know, I'm not too picky, so I'll just pick one random color. So there's a color for them. Now we need a quick track. So insert menu, click source. And we want this on its own track. Let's call this click. And I always like to have this as the top track in the session. I'll just extend this out to be like 10 minutes long. Doesn't really matter. This is just a uh, quick track generator. So I'll hit play here. And we do this on its own track so that it can be sent out to headphones and you have a different mix for your speakers versus the drummer's headphones. And that's super important. It also gives you access to an effects chain. So if you need that click to be really loud and compressed or EQ'd a certain way, it's so easy to do it that way. Speaking of headphone mix, there's a quick way of doing a headphone mix using the SWS Cubus generator. So just going to select all the tracks that you want to be sent out to your secondary headphones. And then you go to the extensions menu and Cubus generator. I'm going to do a pre-fader post effects send. Uh, just, just call it headphones. And the hardware output, I already have my output three and four named headphones. So that's why it shows up there like that. We want to uncheck master parent send because we don't want this track to be receiving all our drum tracks and then going back to the master track uh, because this is only going to outputs three and four. And then solo defeat means that if we solo one of these tracks, we're not going to kill the, uh, the headphone output. So yeah, so we'll click on create Cubus that makes a new track in the project called headphones. There's a send on all the individual tracks going to the headphones track. It will follow the panning. So overhead left was panned hard left, and it's automatically copied that setting to the, uh, to the send. Because this is a pre-fader send, I can turn down the click track in my headphones or the studio monitors, and the drummer will still hear the click track. I've got the click track turned down, but because it's a pre-fader send, it's going to go to this track and we'll see it on the meter. Now the drummer doesn't necessarily need all of these sounds in his headphones. You know, maybe he just wants kick and snare. I can just uh, shift click to turn off the toms. He probably doesn't want room mic or anything like that. And if we want to adjust the volume Going to his headphones, there's this option here. You can turn it down, turn it up. So this is the actual send to the audio interface output before the headphone preamp. Usually you would keep this at Unity and just turn up the headphone amp. It's another way that we can adjust that. If it's clipping, actually, we can turn that down and avoid any distortion going to his headphones. And once again, because this is its own track, we have a full effects chain. So we could add recomp to this and give him just a little bit of compression on his headphone mix. We could also add in re-EQ and we could cut out all the super low end and all the super high end and actually get a little bit more volume bandwidth, I guess you could call it, to his headphones if he just always wants his headphones louder. So now this is pretty much set up. We'll just double check that our settings in um, project settings are correct. Project sample rate, I would want to set the sample rate. On the media page, make sure that I have an audio files folder selected. Call this audio files or media. Uh, we just want to make sure that everything we record goes to the correct place. 
should double check our recording settings. So wave 24 bit. So that's perfect. That's exactly how I like it. If we had a scratch track or like a demo, uh, we would want to have that up uh, as like track two maybe. And we want to make sure that that is in the uh, headphone mix as well. So just, so I just copy that. And from the demo, I'd probably want to put it, some markers into the project for uh, tempo changes or just to aid in navigation through the session, dropping in markers for different parts of the song and things like that. So this would be my template. I do a save as, and, uh, and then that becomes the starting point for the first song that we record. From there, the mix will probably change. And so when we are finished song one, we would just delete the media, do a save as, and then continue recording for song two using the same kind of updated mix. And that's all I have to say on this topic. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. Visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.